זה לא עובד? Good evening, dear women. Let's concentrate. Righteous women, this parasha this week, Be'ezrat Hashem, is parasha titro. We are going to receive Torah on the Madhouse tonight. Beshaat Tova. I would like to uh, dedicate this lesson to... Lea Mashem? Yona Ben Sara. יונה בן שרה לרפואה שלמה ברמה חבר רב של סגידה ומרדכי דוד בן שרה אמן רפואה שלמה אמן אמן So I would like to tell you first of all בעזרת השם I hope משיח will come right now שיגיע משה צריך לנו לרב אמן אמן שיגיע מבשר אליהו הנביא אליהו תשבי אליהו גלעדי ממרב לנו משיח בן דוד אליהו הנביא זכור לטוב So we are starting with פרשת יתרו and דווקא And this parasha is called over Yitro, which was a girl. He wasn't a Jewish man. He became Jewish. And the whole parasha, which we received the Torah in, is called over his name. The whole parasha is called Yitro. It says, Rashi says that Yitro has seven names. Reuel, Yeter, Yitro, Chovav, Chever, Kani, Veputiel. He had seven names. He used to be a high priest. He knew all idol worshipping that was in the world. Any idol worshipping that was there, he knew about it. And he was searching for the truth. He wanted to know, Yitro wanted to know, who is the real God in this world. And we can see in this parasha, he joins Moshe Rabbeinu and Am Yisrael and the children of Israel. And he becomes a true Ger, Ger Tzedek, which means he converts his religion to Judaism. And he, he has his circumcision in this parasha, and he becomes a true, a, a true girl. I would like to tell you, we're going to answer the question, why is this parasha, which we are receiving the Holy Torah, is on his name? And it starts with Vayishma Yitro. It's written, the parasha starts, Vayishma Yitro. And I have to tell you something, it's Yitro heard. And it's very weird because the King David says, Shamu Amim, Shamu Amim, Girgazu. He says, All of the nations heard what Hashem did to the children of Israel. All of the nations. All the nations heard and they became very angry. It says, King David says that. So why is it written, Vayishma Itro? What's different about Itro? What did he hear? So it says in Masechet Avot something beautiful. It says in Masechet Avot, "Bechol yom, beyom, bat kol yotzet mehar chorev u'machrezet v'omeret oy lehem labriot mel bona shel Torah." Every day, bat kol, a voice from heaven comes. Every day, including today, in our days, there's a bat kol from heaven that announces every day, "Oy va'avoy," to the people from the el bona shel Torah. From the shame of the Torah, that we are not learning Torah, we are not studying, we are not practicing the Torah. Every day, day by day, the, the back call, the voice, is over here. It depends on who listens to it and who hears that. You know, the Baal Shem Tov Shutot says, in order to hear that back call, you need that your heart will be open. So Yitro's heart was open because he was looking for the truth. He was looking. How do we know? And this is a chidush. Ledati, how do we know that he was truly looking for the truth? Because look at his name. Yitro is written like this in Hebrew. I'm writing it over here. So I'm taking those two words, Taf and Reish. Taf and Reish is a Tar. Tar. Tar means that he was searching. He went in order to search for the truth. Vav is Vava Vidui, confession, Vidui, which means he confessed with himself. He, he realized that the truth is a Shem in this world. He created the world. And Yud is a Seret Adibot, the Ten Commandments that he took on himself. You understand? So, you know, this, his name resembles another woman that she is the mother of all kings of the children of Israel. You remember her name, Ruth? Look, Ruth was also, she wasn't Jewish. She was searching for the truth. And look over here. 
The same thing. He tara. Tar. It's the same thing. She was searching. Look, Tafresh, the same thing as you see over here in Tro. She was searching for the truth. Please come and sit over here. She was searching for the truth. And while she was searching for the truth, this is confession. She does confession just like it was. You see over here? The Vav? This is the Vav of confessing to Hashem. Now I understand that you are the only one in this universe. And why? What did he hear? What did it draw hear? What all the nations heard? It all, look at this word. Vaishma. Each letter in this word is, it says another word. Vaishma. Bekriyat. Yam, Suf, that's the Yud. You see? Bab is for Bekriyat, Yud is for Yam, Suf, Shama, Milchemet, Amalek. Can you see that? So what did he hear? He heard the splitting of Yam, Suf, each letter in the word Vaishma. And then he heard about the, the war with Amalek, Amalek's war. So tell me, didn't he hear about the ten plagues? Didn't he? And the, the sitting of Yam Suf and the war with Amalek, everybody heard. It's not only Itro that heard that, but Itro's heart was open in order to receive Hashem's, Hashem's notion in this world. He was, and you know, if this parasha is over a, Jew, a non Jewish person that became Jewish, a girl said it, Alachat Kama de Chama, the children of Israel. If the children of Israel wake up, and this diamond that they have inside is polished. Wow, they shine all over the world, the shine that they have. It's, all, it's spread all over the world. So look over here. And what's it's so important about Kriyat Yam Suf, the, the Milchemet Amalek? So the Midrash says, well, you can see that there was the, split, the splitting of Yam Suf when the sea split, the Red Sea split. You can see that all of the nations saw that because I told you the waters everywhere, even in a pot all over the globe, opened to 12 paths. It was split to 12 paths. So we can see that this is a shown miracle. Everybody saw this miracle. It's a miracle that everybody knew about. And it's more than that. They saw the name of God. They saw God. They, they, they took their hand and they were raising their hand and saying, this is, a, this is God. And it says that even the maid, the lowest person in the children of Israel, Haidiot, Bebnei Be Israel, saw what even Yechezkel ben Buzi did not see. The Navi Yechezkel ben Buzi did not see. So they saw Hashem. It's like Bezrat Hashem, Shagia Mashiach, when Mashiach comes, it says, Ayn Be'ayn Yeru Beshub Hashem Tzion, which means Ayn Be'ayn, we will see Him with our eyes, we'll see Hashem. Bezrat Hashem, Yimera Be'amenu, Amen. So it says, so he, so he knew about this, this was a known miracle, everybody saw the miracle. And Milchemet Amalek, it says, like he said, if Amalek saw those miracles, and he knew that God revealed Himself to the world, and then still Amalek went and fought with the children of Israel? You can't even understand how come it, it can happen. So it says, the Gemara says, Amalek nikra yetzer ara, which means Amalek is the bad spirit. He is like the bad spirit, Zamalek. So he said, because once he decided to become a Jewish person, he can be Jewish anywhere he wants. He doesn't have to go with the children of Israel. But uh, the Ross said, I have to be part of Moshe Rabbeinu and the children of Israel in order that I will have the power to overcome the bad spirit, Yetzirah, which is Amalek. Because you can't do that without the holiness of Moshe Rabbeinu. Because Moshe Rabbeinu, look at his name. Moshe, we write it like this. This is the He. Okay. This is Moshe Rabbeinu, the name of Moshe. Moshe Rabbeinu has in his name the name of God, the full name of God. Mem He, 45 equals 45, the numerical value by Gimatria is the full name of God. Yud, K, Vav, K, Bemiluyotiot, when you write Yud like this, Yud, Vav, Dalet, and then He, He, Aleph, and then Vav, Vav, Aleph, Vav, and then another He, He, Aleph, together it's 45. We'll say, I'll just write over here, Yud is 10, Bab is 6, Dalet is 4, add the numbers. He is 5, Aleph is 1, Bab is 6, uh, Aleph is 1, and another 6, and then you have also 6 over here. 5 plus 1 together 
It's 46, the name, full name of God. The so, sorry, 45, the full name of God. And then you have the Shin over here that has three Babim. One for Abraham Avinu, one for Yitzchak, and one for Yaakov Avinu. So he has the full protection. And I would like to show you something. And you know who resembles the name of Moshe Rabbeinu? Who received, who do we know from the Torah that received a lot of wisdom from Moshe? Adam. Who, who received, I know, from the Jewish people? Shlomo. So look, if I add over here the Lamed of Shlomo, over here the Lamed, you get Shlomo, the same letters. This is Shlomo, you see Memhei of Moshe Rabbeinu, Shin of Moshe Rabbeinu, we just added the Lamed. And the Lamed is also the name of God, because Lamed is combined from Vav, which is 6, and Chaf is 20, together it's 26, it's Yutkei Vavkei. It's also, look how beautiful it is, out of the name of Moshe, we add the Lamed of Shlomo, and we receive the same thing. So you can see it over here. And again, I'm asking the question, now that he understood that he has to be, we have to, Lidvok Betzadikei Ador, he had to go and stick himself to a righteous Jewish person, which was Moshe, he was the righteous person in that generation. So he had to be over there in order that Moshe will be a cube of, of holiness towards all of the children of Israel. You know, it says that Akadosh Baruch Hu Hashem did not let the angels go into Egypt because he knew that if they will go into Egypt, the bad spirit will, go, will be over them too. They won't go out of Egypt. So look how holy was the, were the children of Israel. Even though the children of Israel were in Egypt, they had the power, the strength, still to take themselves out and to do two mitzvot. You know, I told you there were two mitzvot that they did because of two bloods they went out of Egypt. One was the blood of Korban Pesach, and the other one was the blood of Mila, Brit Mila. So because of two of them, but they had to, to, to pull themselves from, from the bottom up which means that we have a holiness in our, inside us, and we can just we need to know how to draw it outside. So, it says in the midrash, and this is Or Torah. In Or Torah, it says, why was he so surprised? He uh, told about the war with Amalek. He said that the war, that the splitting of the sea is is from nature, but the war with Amalek is above nature, and this is very weird. Or Torah says it's very weird. Why? Because I would like to show you. Listen, heard. Oh, heard. heard. Okay, let's continue. So I would like to show you something. You know that the sign, the astrology sign of, of Mitzrayim was Tale. Tale, lamb. And I told you that Tale is fire. Okay? The four, four basic fun, fundamental uh, signs. There's fire, water, uh, wind, and earth. So you know that tale is, is fire. You remember tale is a lamb? You remember we spoke about it? When we spoke about Egypt, we spoke about it. So what did Yitro understand? Look how wise he was. He said to himself, if Egypt are fire, are from the sign of fire, and then they went into the sea, and the water covered them, water always extinguishes uh, fire. So this is out of nature. It's of course that they drowned in the water, because their sign is fire, and water always gets rid of fire. So that's normal. That's, it's, a big, it's a big miracle, but it's still in, in the borders of nature. But he said, Amalek, their sign, Amalek, their sign is Scorpio. And it is water. Amalek is Scorpio, and it's water. So it says, and God, I've already heard, Esh Ochla, which means God is out of fire. So how come Yoshua and Moshe Rabbeinu can't uh, overcome Amalek? Because they are from water and Hashem is fire. This is above nature. If you look at the signs, this is above nature. Because he, says, he just said to himself, Kadosh Baruch Hu Hashem, Esh Ochla. It's written in the Torah. 
This is the sign of fire. And Amalek is water. And you know that all is water extinguishes fire. But God got rid of Amalek. Not totally, but still. So he said to himself, this is above nature. This has to be the only one, the only God in this world. He created this world. So he came to the children of Israel and wanted to be a Ger Tzedek. So it says, Vaishma Yitro Kohen Midian. And he listened, and Yitro heard, Yitro Kohen Midian, the priest of Midian, came to the children of Israel. And then you can see over there, you, there's a, a, a part that, that says the names of the, of the two sons of Moshe Rabbeinu. And it's very weird. Why do they need to be mentioned over here again? We know already how he called his sons. Gershom Veliezer. Why did they mention it over here? This is like Musa, moral for us. Because over here, when we say Gershom, it says, B'mesechet sota, chen amakom al yashvav. Moshe Rabbeinu called his son Gershom because he wanted to remind himself that he is Ger in a land that is not his. It says, B'mesechet sota, chen hamakom al yashvav, which means once we go out of the land of Israel, we settle down in a different country, and then at the beginning we feel strangers, we don't find ourselves, we want to go back, we, you know, we miss Israel and we want to go back. But then little by little we find Parnassah, we find good income, we feel comfortable, we find friends, we don't think a lot about the land of Israel. So, and then we learn from the Goim their ways and we feel comfortable with that. But Moshe Rabbeinu is teaching us that we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't feel comfortable in any place that we are except the land of Israel. That's why it says, because it means uh, the, uh, the likelihood of the place is on, its, uh, uh, peop on the people that live in that place. The, and uh, Moshe Rabbeinu wants to tell us we should not do that in any generation. We shouldn't feel comfortable in any generation in, in other countries except for the land of Israel. We should think about it and go back to the land of Israel. I'm just giving you pninim, negiot. And then it says, Vayavo Yitro. And Vayavo Yitro means Yitro came to show us how Yitro was so happy to come to Moshe, to go to Moshe. And it says, you know the difference between Vayavo, Vayelech? The difference between, you remember that Yaakov Avinu was running away from Esav? So it says, Vayelech Harana, and he went Harana. And when you say Vayelech in Hebrew, you mean that he didn't have the passion to go out. He didn't want to go out. He didn't enjoy going out of the land of Israel. But here you can see Vayavo. Vayavo is a word that he enjoys. He has enthusiasm to go. This is Vayavo. That's why it's written Vayavo. And on the continuation of, of the sentence, it's written, Vayomer el Moshe ani chotancha itro. And itro says to Moshe, I am your father-in-law, itro. Doesn't Moshe know that he is his father-in-law? Isn't that weird? He knows that he's his father. Why does he say, you know, I'm your father-in-law, Itro? And it's very weird. Look how beautiful it is. It's giving us a hint. Ani Chotancha Itro. Ani Chotancha Itro. If you will look at the sentence, look at the first letters of each word. Alef Chet Yud. He says, my brother, you are my brother. Look, you are my brother. And what does he mean, he told, when he says, you are my brother? What brother? He's his father-in-law. Because he told, he's going, he told, wants to remind him, I am the fixing of Cain. That's what he reminds him. I came to fix Cain's souls. I'm the good part of Cain. And you, are, you came to this world to fix Hebel. Heaven is the brother of Cain, because Moshe, I told you, Mem is for Moshe, Shin is for She, and He is for Heaven. So you are my brother. I came to fix Cain, and you came to fix Heaven. Otherwise, it shouldn't tell him. We know that he's his father-in-law. Oh, Moshe, of course, knows that he's his brother-in-law. He doesn't need to remind him. So he says to him, don't forget that I am, I came to this world to fix Cain. And you came to fix Hevel. And you know, I gave you my daughter Tzipora, which means Cain killed Hevel. Part of it was because of the Tomaya Tera, which means the twin that Hevel had, and he wanted that twin. So he killed Hevel. So now he gave him back the woman. He gave him Tzipora. He gave him his daughter. And then what happened? He killed him. Well, he killed him now. You remember when Moshe Rabbeinu was running away from Mitzrayim? He gave him food. He gave him, and dr and gave him water to drink. So he, the opposite of killing him. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you.
I to ask, uh, did it wrong you that he's kind, like for mm. for himself? Yeah. Both like, like, the you have a brother, brother, brother Shamon? Because yes. Your brother, so he knew. Yes. It's a, the, you know what? What's the problem? Today we are not spiritual like like in those in those gen why? You know why there was spiritual so much? Because they were connected to nature. We lost it. We are not so I told you Elohim, the Gimatria in numerical value is eighty-six. It equals Hateva. It equals nature. What happens is we lost this connection with nature. Once we were very connected. And once, and there were, there were astrologists, they knew all the mazalot, all the signs, they knew everything. But we lost it because we are, you know, we, we are surrounded with technology, we lost nature, we lost this skill. But so, it's better for them, like, we don't know exactly what are the you know? We came here, we don't even know the <laughs> But you know, you know what your tikkun is in this world, you know what? You know how you know that? What's more difficult? Uh, yes. The most difficult, the things that are difficult for you to do in the mitzvot, this is your tikkun to do in this world. If it's a shonara, if it's jealousy, any midah, any measure that you have that you feel that it's difficult for you to work on yourself, this is exactly your tikkun in this world. This is your tikkun. This is the way that you can just test yourself. What do I need to do in this world? This is the tikkun. So it says over here that Cain came, and you'll see that Cain not only became Jewish, and he also sacrifices sacrifices to Hashem. He on the Mizbeach to Hashem over here. You remember that he was jealous with the sacrifice that Heaven sacrificed. You remember with the Mizbeach. So now he's going and, and he gives presents to, to Hashem with all of his heart. We're going to continue. I want you to see when we say father-in-law, Chotan in Hebrew, father-in-law. You say I took the head out and I told you this is Achi, my brother. But look what is left over. You know what this is? Tanakh. Tanakh. Torah. Nevim. Tuvim. This is also a chidush. Look, this is Tanakh, which means that it all says, I'm accepting on myself the Torah, Nevim, Ktuvim, all the Jewish Torah. Look how beautiful it is. It's part of Chotancha. That's why he's already telling him, only by hints, he's telling him what he's going to do, and, and he wants to finish his tikkun. Look how beautiful it is. Torah, Nevim, Ktuvim. It's already inside. And it says, let's continue. And it, and it, it says that once they met each other, it's written, uh, You remember that I told you, when you meet a friend or when you say goodbye, you have to say, Le shalom. Okay. Le shalom. You remember being called Le shalom. Le shalom. Why Le shalom? Okay. Le shalom. And you don't say be shalom. When King David said to his son of shalom, go be shalom, his son died. What do you mean be shalom, be shalom? When he said to him, go be shalom, go, go to peace. No, go in peace. Be shalom in peace, be shalom to peace. So David Amelech said to Avshalom, his son, Lech be shalom. Sorry? He didn't like him more because he, he loved him. him. Once he passed, yeah. when he, once he was dead, David Amelech said, I wish I was dead instead of him. Yes. He loved him. He went against him because of the sin with Bathsheba. So he went against him. So you'd never say Beshalom. Beshalom is when a, a, a person passes away. That's Beshalom. You say always Le Shalom. Why? Because the Lamed I told you is the name of God. It's 26. The Vav is 6 and the Chaf is 20. Together it's the name of God. You send the person with the name of God. Le Shalom. So, and Shalom is the name of God too, yes. I'm sorry. So then why uh, David did know that? Of course he knew that. But this is what he had to say from Hashem. Because he was supposed, because he went against his father. He was chasing his father. He wanted to be a king. Yes. Avshalom bni Avshalom, he ten moti tachtecha yom. He says. He says Avshalom bni Avshalom. He says my Avshalom, my son Avshalom, he ten moti tachtecha yom. If God will give my death instead of you, he says. You don't. I don't even understand how much he loved him. 
But he went against him, and he wanted to take the kingdom. Shalom David, Aviv. So you see, he said Bet Shalom, and even the, the brothers of Yosef, they told him Lech Le Shalom, and he succeeded. He became the ruler of Egypt. So every time you see Le Shalom, and you see over here also, it says Vei Shalu Ish Le Le Shalom. You see it in this parasha too, which means only success can come from this word Le Shalom. You have to use the lamid. Two piece. לא, הם לא יודעים. אומרים לך לשלום. את תראי, הרי אלה שיודעים יודעים להשתמש בזה נכון. בשלום או לשלום. אבל אלה שלא יודעים פשוט מחוסר ידיעה. לא יודעים. אבל now that you know, spread it out, tell others. ללמוד שעל מנת ללמד. לשלום. לשלום. It says about the Tana, רבי יוחנן בן זכאי. It says about the Tana, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai. It says about him, about Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai was a big Tana. And it says about him that there wasn't any person that started greeting him le shalom. He always greeted everyone le shalom before they even took a word out of their mouth. It says even a koi, a goy in the market, he used to greet le shalom before he greeted him. Why? Because it's good to, when you greet someone in peace, uh, to peace, you, which, uh, you make good energy around you. Only good things will come around you. You don't have the bad energy that all is, that is waiting in this world. Because it says once you go out of the house, Yetzirah is out of the house. He's waiting for you, wherever you go. People say like shalom. I never heard like shalom. I never heard like shalom. Okay, but Zatashem, now you're going to hear. You'll be more attentive, you're going to hear. Yes. Like people usually say shalom. Yeah, when you... Shalom is the word. No, 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 that's the wrong word. No, no, no. Shalom is the word. But when you when you want to say something that you will succeed, you say lech la shalom. Lech le shalom. Lech le shalom. But like you said, like whatever he saw, like he greeted the people before they say like hi. No, he greeted the people shalom before they even spoke with him because shalom gives peace. The word shalom itself, shalom is like saying to be in peace. And every, you know, when you take out good, if you take out of your mouth good words, when you spread them out, you'll have a good energy around you. If you spread bad words around you, you'll have bad energy around you. And it's not only the words that you take out of your mouth, but the energy that you take with those words. You understand? Okay, what's the difference? I told you. Le shalom, at you can explain it? Who can explain it? Who can explain it? No, no. Okay. Shalom is Shem Shem too. Yes. Tamaim Shem Shem. Filu Shalosh is to give a Shalom Lamed. Okay. Let's continue. And we see after that, Moshe Rabbeinu tells Yitro, I want to go before Mamad Ar Sinai. Moshe Rabbeinu tells Yitro all the miracles that were made to the children of Israel by Hashem. And we can see that it's written, Vayichad Yitro. Yitro is, uh, has enthusiasm towards Hashem. He's happy. His, his skin, you know, all the hair on his skin just stands. Chidudim, chidudim becomes because of what he hears about Hashem. And then he says, Vayomer Yitro, Baruch Hashem asher etzil itchem yad Mitzrayim. He says, Thank God, Baruch Hashem, that saved you from the hands of Egypt, that took you out. You remember that I told you that you cannot go out of the gates of Egypt. You remember that. So he said, Thank God. There are two sentences over here that he thanks God. And you know that Gemara says a, a very weird thing, but the Gemara in Masechet Sanhedrin it's written, G'nai hu le-Moshe ve-le-shishim ribo, shelo amru baruch ad sheba yitro ve-amar baruch Hashem. It says it's a shame for Moshe Rabbeinu and the, and the children of Israel that did not say baruch until Yitro came and said baruch Hashem. And this is very weird. Why would they say it's a shame to the children? I mean, they sang a big song, 18 
סנטנסיס, י"ח פרקים, פסוקים, 18 פסוקים, חי בשירת הים, in the song that they sang after the splitting of the ים סוק. So they have 18 sentences, and he only said two sentences he told. Only two sentences, and still the Midrash says, G'nai le'moshev ve'le'shishim ribo. And from here we learn that a person should always thank Hashem, not only for the miracles that He does with him, but for the miracles that He does for others. For this, that every day the, the creation repeats itself. For that every day that He does miracles for His friends, not only for Himself. He shouldn't be selfish. He should recognize the, the deeds of Hashem in other people, in other places. In plants, in animals, everything that surrounds us, then he opens his spiritual eyes. So it says from here, we say that from here it comes, that we need to appreciate what Hashem does for others. This is what he did. He didn't say thank you for what you did to me, but he said thank you for what you did to the children of Israel, how you took them out of Egypt. That's what he says over here. And we continue and we can see why was this Pasha also called on the name of Yitro, because over here you can see that Moshe Rabbeinu was sitting and judging the children of Israel. And it all saw that there was a big line towards Moshe. From the morning after Shacharit, a big line. And they were all waiting for Moshe Rabbeinu to judge them. And the 70 Kenim were sitting, the old people, the, the wise people were sitting with Moshe Rabbeinu. But Moshe Rabbeinu was listening to each pro problem of each person. And he gave the solution. And it all was sitting and said, what do you do? You're going to be ruined like this. You won't have the strength. It will warn you out. You have to have another system, he says. So he criticizes the system. But you know this is a building crit criticism because he gives him also a solution. He tells Moshe Rabbeinu, you, you need to choose, he says. And he says, what do you need to choose? He says, I want you to choose people that have four characteristics. He says, Anshei Chayil, Yireh Elokim, Anshei Emet, Sonei Betza. Four characteristics. He says, men of wealth, men who, who, who are God-fearing, and then men of truth, and men that don't have better, they don't have greed. That's Sonei Betza, they, they hate Sonei Betza. And you can see over there, at the continuation, Ketuv Vaif Charm, Vaishma Moshe Lekol Chotano, and Moshe listens to his father-in-law, he asks Hashem first if, if this is what he should do, and God tells him, yes, this is what he should do. He says, choose them, teach them, they're going to judge the people, and then Bezrat Hashem, the hard, hard things that come, come, comes over to them, and it's hard for them to judge, it will come, they will send them to you. So it says that Moshe Rabbeinu listened to his father-in-law, and instead of taking all the characteristics, and Sheikhal, it's written, and Sheikhal, Yireh Elokim, and Sheikhmet, Sonei Betza, they don't like read, he chooses and Sheikhal. That's it. But it's written that he did everything that Chotano told him, that his father-in-law told him. So how come? We don't see other, all the four characteristics, but only one, and Sheikhal, wealthy people. And the Midrash asks, how come only wealthy people? And it says that he did whatever he told him. So it says, Anshe Chayel, it says b'masechet avot, Ezeo ashir asameach b'chelko. Ben Zoma omer, Ezeo ashir asameach b'chelko. Who is a rich person? He who is happy, satisfied with what God gave him. If a person is satisfied with what God gave him, even if it's a little and even if it's a lot, if he's satisfied what God gave him, then he is God fearing, he's afraid of Hashem, he's a true person, and he he's not corrupted. Uh, he doesn't have any greed in him. That's why he chose Anshei Chayil, because if those are Anshei Chayil, which means wealthy people, wealthy in, in the sense of they are satisfied what they have, yes, spiritually they are wealthy. Because this is what he chose, then he knows all the characteristics are already there. He didn't need to, to, to tell all the characteristics over here in the Bika. And now we continue. We continue and we can see it's written. It's written in the continuation. And Moshe went up to God. Which means he went up Mount Sinai. He went up the mountain. And here I want to tell you something. It says in, in the Gemara that when Moshe went up to the mountain, he had problems with the angels. 
The angels had problem with Moshe Rabbeinu. Yeah, I'm going to tell you all the problems. It's, the angels did not want to give the Torah to Moshe Rabbeinu. They said, why would a human being have the Torah? So it says in the Gemara B'Masechet Shabbat, I'm going to tell you everything, it says over there that the angels were very angry and they went to Hashem and it's written, when Moses ascended to, the, to heavenly heights, the ministering angels said before Hashem, Ribono Shalolam, Master of the Universe, it says. Ma leyelod isha benenu. They say, what is someone born of a woman doing among us? Why did you put, why did you tell him to go over here among us? Amar lehem, God told them lekabel Torah ba. He came to receive the Torah. It tells them God. Amar lefanav. They said before him, chamudag nuza. The, is the, like it's a treasure that is hidden. This is what you want to give him, the Torah. Shegnuzal echad shamot veshivim ba'arba dorot kodem shenivra olam. That was stored by you as a treasure for nine hundred and seventy-four generations before the world was created. They say because the Torah, I told you, nine hundred seventy-four generations before the world was created. Do you remember I told you in Bereshit, Bereshit bara Elokim. First, before there was this creation, God created the letters, the Hebrew alphabet. Bereshit bara Elokim et from Aleph to Taf, all the tw all the twenty-two letters. Then the Torah was written after the creation of the letters. And the Torah was waiting for 974 generations before the world was created. So the angels are telling him, it waited just to give it to a human being? To a, ma that a human being that is born from a woman and a father? It seems flesh very... <laughs> Sorry? Flesh and blood. Again, flesh and blood. I would like to continue and it says like this. You intend to give it to flesh and blood. And it says, You remember King David says that what is a mortal that you should remember him or the son of man that you, that you should recall him, is, they say. Hashem, our Lord, how grand is your name in all earth. That you bestow your glory upon heavens, it says. And it continues, it says, God says, Amar lo HaKadosh Baruch Hu Moshe, God tells Moshe, Hachzer lahen tshuva, answer them, God says. Give, him the, give them the answer. You see how wise is Moshe Rabbeinu tells them, let, let the angels, they are asking a question, answer, you should answer them, listen. Moshe and it's a, Ken, he tells him, answer them. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, Ribbono Shel Olam, he says, Master of you, the universe, he says, Mitiareani, Shema Yisrafuni Behevel Piem, I'm afraid that they're going to burn me with a breath of the mouth. They're angels, they're Srafim, they can burn me. The fire will go out of their mouth. I can't answer them, I fear them. So God tells him, Echoz Bekisek Vodi, Bechazor Lahen Tshuva. God tells him, Take hold of the throne of my glory and then give them an answer. God tells him, gives him strength, don't be afraid, they won't burn you. Hold my chair and they will uh, and give them an answer. And then it says, it continues, Melame, uh, just a minute, Amar Lefanav, Torah Shata, he says to God, the, the Torah, Master of the Universe, the Torah that you are going to give me, he says, Makatuba, what, what is written in the Torah? And it's, it says, Anochi Hashem Elokecha, Asher Otsatiha Me'eretz Mitzrayim. He said, God tells him, Anochi Hashem Elokecha, Asher Otsatiha Me'eretz Mitzrayim. I am God, your Savior that I took you out of Egypt. Asher Otsatiha. And Moses tells them, Moshe Omer Lem, Lemitzrayim, Yaratem, were you in Egypt? He tells the angels. Did you, what, did you have to be slaves in Egypt? He they asked the angels. Did you descend to Egypt? Uh, were you enslaved to Pharaoh? He says. Moshe Rabbeinu asked the angels, Torah, lama tiye lachem? Why do you need the Torah? If it's written in the Torah, Anuchi Hashem Elokecha, Shorotzatich HaMeretz Mitzrayim, you don't need the Torah. You weren't enslaved to Paro, you don't need the Torah, he says. Shuv Makati, again, what, is, what else is written in the Torah? It says, Lo yelecha Elokim acherim, there shall not be unto you gods of others. And, and he says, sorry, other gods, yes. And he says, do you live, he asked them, do you live among nations who worship other gods? 
He asked them, do you live among nations who worship other gods? And they don't have an answer because they don't live among the nations that do not, uh, that, they don't live with the goyim. They live only through angels. They're holy. They don't have yet Sarah. So God tells him, God, God tells the angels, do you see what Moshe Rabbeinu is answering you? And because of that, each angel gave a present to Moshe Rabbeinu. And even the angel of death gave the present to Moshe Rabbeinu. And the, de and the angel of death gave him the present of Ktoret. You remember when there was a Magatha to Ami Sol, the children, we're going to speak about it, Sefer Bamidbar, there was a Magatha in, there was a Magatha uh, to the children of Israel. A lot of them died, and Moshe Rabbeinu told, Moshe Rabbeinu told Aaron, do the Ktoret, which you know, the, the Ktoret is innocent. like that. Innocent. Ken. Innocent. innocent, do the innocent, and go through the children of Israel, and go to the, through the children of Israel, and they will then be cured. Because this is a present that he received from the angel of death. So you can see what happened only when he went up to Hashem. We're going to speak about the, the, the Gemara on these pages in the continuation. And we can see over here that Hashem says, Speak to... Tomru lebet Yaakov, tomar lebet Yaakov, et agid lebet Yisrael. And, the, and it says, lebet Yaakov, he says, tell bet Yaakov, and tell Bnei Israel it's written. Levnei Israel. Bet Yaakov. Bnei Israel. We're getting ready to the Mahmoud house tonight. So it's very weird. Why he should, it was enough to say, go and tell the children of Israel. Why did he say Bet Yaakov and then Bnei Israel? Bet Yaakov is for the women, Nashim. And Bnei Israel. It was for the men, Anashim. He tells them, and this is very weird. Why does he say that, Hashem? Why he wanted Moshe that it will be clear to him? You know why? You remember the first sin in the world by Adam Arishon, the first man? What happened? Hashem spoke to Adam Arishon, to the first man, and what he told him? You are not allowed to eat from Etzadah, from the, no the tree of knowledge. He didn't tell that to the, women, to the woman, Chava, but he told it to the man, Adam Arishon. So what did he do, the man? He came to his wife and he told her, listen, God said, you see this tree? The tree of knowledge, we are not allowed to eat from it and we are not allowed to touch it. So he added, she didn't hear that from Hashem. Mm -hmm. And what happened? The snake told her, who told you that? Nothing will happen to you. And he pushed her on the tree. Now once he pushed her on the tree, she touched the tree and nothing happened to her. Because this is not what Hashem said. Nothing happened to her. Then she continued with the sin and took the, the fruit out of the tree. So now Hashem says, you know, you, you know that telephone shabur, like a broken phone, that when someone tells something to someone and then it goes from one to, a, to another, and at, at the end, eventually, you'll hear a different story. There wasn't even a seed of truth from the beginning. So this is the same thing God said. Now I'm giving the Torah. I have to see the women standing to and listening. Because they need to hear exactly what I'm telling the men. I don't want to have something. I don't want anything to happen like happened with Adam Arishon, with the first person. That's why. You see how beautiful. That's why it says Bet Yaakov, which means the women. And then Bnei Israel, which it's, it, it's, it regards the men. So Bet Yaakov, how to... Do we know that it's woman? Because this is what Chazal say. He wrote that twice because he meant first I need to see Bet Yaakov, the women, call the women. Because you know, Bishchut, Nashim Tzadkaniot, Nigelu Am Yisrael, Mimitzrayim, Vizchutan Atidin Ligael. Which means because of righteous women, the children of Israel were redeemed from Egypt, and because of them we're going to be redeemed, Memot Mashiach. And why? Because Bezrat Hashem Imra Bemen Amen. Why? Because the women suffered more than the men. And you know why? Because they had to bear in their womb nine months the children that then they were thrown and been killed. And you know how hard it is? Even though the man, it's also his child, but he doesn't feel the child. It's not in him. He doesn't nurse the child inside. He doesn't, he doesn't have that feeling. We have a gift from Hashem. This is, uh, this is ours from Hashem. So that's why, and still, even though this happened to them, they used to encourage their men, their husbands, to believe in Hashem and to have courage in order to wait for the redemption of, of a Kadosh Baruch Hu from Egypt. So let's continue. It says, God tells Moshe, tell them that I'm going to take them on the wings of eagles. 
I'm going to take them. And it says, why did God choose the eagle? Why does he say that he's going to take them on the wings of eagle? And you know what's the difference between an eagle and other, uh, and other birds? The difference is that all birds take their children with their feet. They hold the children like this, and then they fly. Why? Because they're afraid of what will happen to them from other birds that fly higher than them. So they hold their children like this, but then a man that is on earth can still take an, a bow, bow and arrow and kill the bird and kill, first of all, a child. But the eagle takes his children on his back because he's not afraid from any bird. He is only afraid from a human being. So he says to himself, the eagle, if a human being is going to kill me, he will kill me, but not my son, not my child. So that's why God says, I will take you on Kanfei on the wings of eagles, he says. I will bring you to me, he says. And he says, now if you listen to what I say, and you'll keep everything that I will tell you. And it says like this. I was going to speak also about marriage in a few minutes. It says, what does it mean, Be'ata? Rashi says, gives an interpretation, and it's beautiful. And now, if you are going to listen to what I'm telling you, and Rashi says, what does it mean, Be'ata? It says, Im ata tekablu alechem ta Torah ye'erav lachem, mikan ve'elach she'kol ha'atchalot kashot. It says that if you will accept the Torah now, now, if you'll accept the Torah, it will be good for you. Anyway, all the beginnings are very hard. And it says, it's very weird. Why does he use Ve'ata and give such an inter interpretation to that? Ve'ata is now. Why, do he, what does he, why does he use this interpretation for that? And the Midrash says, this is a gift from Moshe Rabbeinu to us. Why? It's a sgula. It says that every time a person wants to do a mitzvah, the Yetzirah comes on him and doesn't let him do the mitzvah. It's not easy to do a mitzvah. If you want to go with a skirt, you'll find a thousand, a thousand reasons not to go with a skirt. You'll find a thousand reasons if you want to just do Bikur Cholim to visit a, a sick person, a thousand reasons why you shouldn't do it right now. The children are, are, are on your head, your husband is on your head, everything you can find. The Yetzirah starts working. It says that Yetzirah wakes up one hour earlier than us. Because when we sleep and want to wake up in the morning and dive into Hashem, Yetzirah says, Aren't you tired? You shouldn't wake up now. Sleep a little, five more minutes. Don't wake now. You'll see everybody. So Yetzirah wakes up before us. And we should learn through, uh, from his enthusiasm and have the same enthusiasm to do, to do the opposite, exactly. To use this for the best, for the good. So this is what Yetzirah does. So it says that once the children of Israel are going to accept the Torah, they will have a problem with Yetzirah. So he tells them, listen very carefully, the sgula is that you should first think of doing the mitzvot and accepting the mitzvot in your mind. Why? Because angels, and including Satan, Satan, they cannot read thoughts. Only Hashem reads our thoughts. And once we think about good things that we want to do them, Bezrat Hashem HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us the power to do them, to overcome Yetzar HaRa. So it says, Machshava Tova HaKadosh Baruch Hu Metzartal Emaaseh. Which means, if you think a good thought, God considers that as a good deed already done. Already done. So once you think a good, Rashi tells him, think a good thought. This is a sgula, think a good thought, and then it's like you already did it. And once you come to do that, you'll have, you'll have help from Hashem. You won't have the problem with Yetzer Ara because now they're going to receive the Torah. So he tells them, and it says that uh, Rabbi Yehuda Mibel's Schutot Hagen Eleinu says, this is like a sgula. We need to use it. Every time we want to do a good deed, we have to first accept it in our minds, not say anything, not, not to take it out of our mouth. First accept it in our mind and to just see picture realism, you know, uh, to see how we are already doing it. And then it's like we already did it. And then we'll go to Maasim, to actions. Once we go to actions, God says, if you open me, Chodash al Machat, the split of the, of, the, of the pin, if you open for me, I will open paths for you, and if that Sharim, that carriages and horses will go through. So God brings the angels and good people to help you. You'll see, once you want to do a good deed, you'll see that good people will gather around you and help you do the good deed, the mitzvah that you want to do.
So this is Ve'ata, but it continues, Ve'item li sgula mikol ha'amim. And it says, and, and you will observe my covenant, you shall be uh, to me the most beloved treasure of all people. Ve'item li sgula mikol ha'amim. Look what's the Haitem Li Sgula Mikol Hami. And you are, be, you are going to be my treasure of all people. And I would like to ask you when a person gets married, we have a bride and a broom. What does the broom tell to the bride when they get married? Hare at Mekudeshet Li, Nahon? Hare at I would like to tell you, we know how to do kedusha, how to how to how to how to wed someone from Hashem. God is the the broom, the children of Israel, the groom. Sorry, God is the groom, and the children of Israel is the bride. I would like to tell you. God kidesh the children of Israel with the word li. How do we know that? What is the word li? What does it mean, the word li? Mine. Mine. Look, my ken, mine, but I need to show you. I told you that lamed is combined from vav and chat, and I told you that this is the name of God. Lamed resembles God. It's the highest letter in the Hebrew aleph bet, and it resembles God. This is lamed. Hagadol Shebaelim Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Yud resembles the children of Israel. Yud, because she's a Me'at Shebaamim, the, the fewer in the nations. If you look at all the nations, we are the fewer in all the nations. This is the Yud, the Me'at Shebaamim. If you look very carefully, this combination between Lamed and Yud is the Kedusha, it's the confidence between Hakadosh Baruch Hu, God, and between us the children of Israel. So God, Kidesh, the children of Israel with the word Li. How do we know that? You remember that Yaakov Avinu, after he saw the dream, he had the dream of the, of the ladder, Sulam Yaakov, of the, of the ladder, he dreamt about the ladder. What did he ask Hashem? He said to Hashem, it's written that he said to Hashem like this, Im if God is going to be with me, Venatan Li Lechem Lechol, he says, Venatan Li, לחם לאכול ובגד ללבוש ובגד ללבוש מה זה דר יעקב אבינו דו? once he dreamt about סולם יעקב he saw already מתן תורה the Torah that the children of Israel are going to receive in Mahamad Har Sinai when they will be around the, uh, uh, mount, the mountain of Sinai so what did he say? he said God Remember the word Li that you over here made a brit, a covenant between you and the children of Israel in that word. Because a husband needs to take care of his wife, so he needs to give her clothes, sherak, suta, you remember? What does he need to give her? Sherak, suta, vornata. A husband is on the Ktubah, he signs that he needs to give her sherak, suta, vornata. Which means sherak is food, lechem is bread, there's a sherak. He also has an obligation ksuta, to give her clothes, and he, he signs in the ktuba, and he has the onata. Onata means that he has to be intimate with her, to bring children. He signs over it. Three things. So what did Yaakov Avinu say? I saw already in the dream that you're going to get married to the children of Israel. There's going to be kedusha between you and the children of Israel with the word li. With this word, he says. So now he tells Hashem. I would like to remind you, as a husband, you have to give me food and clothes, says Yaakov Avinu. Look how beautiful it is. And look at the David Amelech. King David also says that. King David says like this. In, in chapter 120, Kuf Chaf, it says, Shira ma'alot el Hashem batzarata li karati vayaneni. Once I have troubles, I have problems, I call God in the name Li to remind him that he has a brief, a confidence between me, between him and the children of Israel by Yanenian. He answers me. I call him. Which means with this word I call Hashem and he answers me. Hashem answers me with this word. And what is so important about, when does Kadosh Baruch does Shlom Bayit? 
feast at home with the children of Israel, you know, look, out, look very carefully. You know that, that Lamed is 30 in Gimatria, and you know that Yud is 10, okay? This 30 for Lamed goes to Chodesh Shalul. Chodesh Shalul, we have 30 days, the Chodesh Shalul, Ad Rosh Hashanah. Ad Rosh Hashanah, we have 30 days of Tshuva that we do. This is the Shlom Bait. God opens His gate to the children of Israel for Shlom Bait. He wants us to do Tshuva with Him. And then we have 10 days from, from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, Ad Yom Kippur. Ad Yom Kippur, from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, we have 10 days. So we have together 40 days of tshuva to do shalom bait with the Kadosh Baruch Hu. <coughs> look how beautiful it is with the word li. And more than that, if you look at the word, the letter lame, that told you it's 26 in numerical value, and you add the 10 of the, of the yud, you will have 36. 36 lame tzabak tzadikim, 36 righteous people, that because of them the world is still standing. There are 36 in Israel and 36 all over the world spread out. Together it's 72, like 72 names of God. So look, look how many hints you have only in the Lee. The Lee is the, the Kiddushin. That's why the husband, the Achatan, does a Kiddushin and says, Harei at Mekudeshet Lee. If he doesn't say the word Lee, there's no Kiddushin. The Lee is the most important word over there. Look how beautiful it is. We learn that from here. And there's another, it says, Mazi Sgula. Sgula, it's like a treasure, some, something special. But Sgula is also from the word Segol. You know what Segol is? It's the Nikud. Segol is this, three dots. This is Segol. You know the dots that we have underneath the Hebrew letters? Yeah. And if you look at the Segol from each side, it's the same. From every, from every side that you look at it, if you look from here, you'll see the same thing. One, two, three. If you look from here, it's the same thing. If you look from here, it's the same thing. It says, the Midrash says that the children of Israel, even though they sin, they are still like diamonds in the, in the eyes of God. They are still righteous in the eyes of God. Because from every side that you're going to look at them, they will be the same. Sgula Mishon Segol. Look how beautiful it is. Sgula Mishon Segol. And we continue. And we see over here that I'm going to give you the story of what happened in Mahmoud Hal Sinai. And we can see that Moshe Rabbeinu tells them, nechonim layom ha-shlishi. He tells them, on the third day, be ready. You have to, to go to the mikveh. Derech Agav, if I'm saying mikveh, this is the 40 days, it's also 40 se'ah, the measure of water in a mikveh. Because Lamed, I told you, is 30, Yud is 10, together it's 40. 40 is also the measure of water that you have in a mikveh, in order to purify yourself. So we have 40 days that Moshe Rabbeinu went and was sitting with Hashem, with HaKadosh Baruch Hu on uh, Har Sinai. And we have 40 Se'ah Shel Ma'in, Bamikveh. And we have 40 Yemei Tshuva, 40 days of Tshuva that we have from Chodesh Shalul Ad Yom Kippur. So the 40 is a Kol Shlom Bait and purifying yourself. And let's continue and see. So God tells, the, tells Moshe, tell them that they have to prepare themselves for three days. For three days, they have to be prepared. And how do they prepare themselves? They have to go to the mikveh to clean, to clean their clothes, and they are not allowed for three days to come near their wives. Mm -hmm. They are not allowed to come near. And then he tells Moshe Rabbeinu, do a border around, around the mountain. He has to do a border around the mountain. And then after three days, we can see... Uh, ah, before Hashem, I wanted to tell another story. Before Hashem gave the Torah to the children of Israel, He went through the nations. And He told them if they want to receive the Torah. And it says, and it says that He went to Esav. And He told Esav, Esav asked Him, what is written in, the, in your Torah? And He says, Lot Yosav, don't murder, you're not allowed to murder. Murder is forbidden. He says, I can't do that because Al Khar Yitzchak told him, Al Kharbecha, you are going to live on your sword. So I can't receive the Torah. So he went to Ammon and Moab, the other nations. He went to them too. And they said, What is written in your Torah? And, and, it's, and they said, Lot enough. He says, Lot enough, we can't. We do adultery all the time. This is our way of life. 
So they did not want to receive the Torah. And then he went to Ishmael, and he told Ishmael, Ishmael asked him, what is written in the Torah? He says, Lotignov, you are not allowed to steal. You are forbidden to kidnap any soul or steal money from anyone. And he says, I can't because it's written that the blessing that I received was, that I will be wild and I will steal and everything all around me. Nobody can live in peace which is true. Look at Ishmael today. Nobody can live in peace <laughs> with them. So they did not want to accept the Torah. The only ones that said Naseb and Ishma were the children of Israel. And it says that after three days that, we, that they were waiting to receive the Torah, just a minute, they were waiting to receive the Torah. I had another that nice thing about the three, yes. It says, uh, be ready for the third day. And it says in the Midrash, it says, Darash oto glili lifnei rav chisda. Baruch harachman shenatan. It says three for three things. One, blessed he who gave Torah meshuleshet, a triple Torah. What is a triple Torah? Torah nevim ktuvim. Torah nevim ktuvim. You know Torah, the Torah that we are studying, Bereshit, Bereshit Shmot, Vayikra, Bamidvar Dvarim, and then we have Nevim, the prophets, and Ktuvim, all the other books that we have later. And then it says, Le'a Meshulash, to a triple, triple a nation. And what is a triple nation? Kohanim, Levim, Israel, triple nation. And that, then it says, Al Shlishi, by the third person. Who is the third person? Moshe Rabbeinu. Es Miriam, Aaron, and Moshe. So he is the third person. And then it says, Bayom Ashlishi, to the third day. I told you three days they had to be ready after three days. And then it says, Bachodesh Ashlishi. Because when did they receive the Torah? Bachodesh Ashlishi. It was the Chodesh of Sivan. The, the, the months, the Jewish months start from, by the Torah, start from Nisan. From, from Chodesh Nisan. So we have Nisan, Yar, Sivan. And it says, in the, it says, I think I skipped something. It says that... Just a minute. Oh, yeah, I did. It says that the children of Israel received the Torah. The Midrash says we do not know exactly either on Vav Besivan or Bezayn Besivan, which means either on the 6th or the 7th of Sivan. Vav or Zayn Sivan, which means either on Yom Shishi, on Friday, or Shabbat. And why don't we know that? It's, it's only in order that we will know that the Torah is not limited in time and space. There's no time, place, or space for the Torah because it spreads, it's infinity. Exactly. It, for all times, there's no limited time. Like we are limited in time and time, place, uh, space and place. But the Torah is not limited. Just like a Kadosh Baruch Hu, he's not limited. The Torah is not limited. And how do we know that? Because it's written. It says that on the third month that, uh, that the children of Israel went out of Egypt on this day. And it's very weird because it's on that day supposed to be written over there. How come it's Bayom Hazeh? Bayom Hazeh is in the present, on this day. But this is in the past. It should have been written Bayom Ahu and not Bayom Hazeh. But it says that the Torah is not limited. We should see ourselves receiving the Torah every day. Every day. If you'll be true to yourself, you'll see that every time you go and study, you learn another new thing. Every time it's like we're getting a new thing every time you go and study Torah. And if you look at the word Azeh, you'll see that He is 5, seven, uh, Zion is 7, and He is 5. Together, how much is it? 17. 17 is Tov, is good. Which means God says, I'm going to give you Lekach Tov, I'm going to give you a good thing. Don't leave my Torah. Because Tet is 9, Vav is 6, and Bet is 2 together is also 17. That's good, the word good. And if you look even in the past, Hahu, He is 5, He another 5, then Vav is 6, and 1 together it's also 17. Which means the Torah is true to the past, <laughs> the past, the present, and the future. You look at it, it's beautiful, I think. <laughs> It's beautiful. If you look at the future, like the future, this is 10, 
Yud is 10, another Yud is another 10, and 5 and 5. How much is it? 30. What is 30? Lamed. What is Lamed? I just told this. 26, the name of God, the Torah, and the 30 days of Tshuva, like Shlom Bait, when God does with the children of Israel. So anyway, we are covered with what God's want. He wanted in a hint to give us that. And we continue, and we can see that the children, it's the third day, and the children of Israel are standing around the mountain. And it says that a day before, a night before, there was rain over the mountain in order to clean the mountain. And then it says, you know, God took also Hara Moriah and put it on Har Sinai, on mountain Sinai. Because on Hara Moriah there was the Akedah. You remember the Akedah? Yitzchak Avinu was sacrificed on Hara Moriah. There are two holy mountains. One is Hara Moriah and Har Sinai. And so they were standing around the mountain, and then there was thunders and lightning. And you remember that I told you in the Barad on the hail that Moshe Rabbeinu, it's written, Vakolot Yachdelun. You remember Yachdelun? I spoke with you about it. When I said Yachdelun, why wasn't it said? And the Yachdelun. You remember that the, the noises will stop? But only stop for now, because I told you it was enough to say Yachdelu in Hebrew. And the noon was added. Noon is 50 in Gimatria. It's 50. Why? Because there was a hint that we will hear the noises of Muhammad al Sinai. 50 days after the children of Israel went out of Egypt, they received, after 50 days, the Torah of Muhammad al Sinai. Then the noises came back, and the noises of the thunders, and the noises of the lightning, and, the, and all the noises of the shofar became louder and louder. And the children of Israel were afraid. So they started moving from the mountain backwards. And Moshe Rabbeinu tells them, don't be afraid. Come closer to the borders that I put over there. And the children of Israel were so afraid that they didn't want, know what to do with themselves. Because of the, they said, how can we hear the voice of God if we can't even bear the noises? And it says that all of the mountain and all the world had good smell of spices. It's like the smells of paradise, Gan Eden. All the smell from God went from paradise was all over the world. You could smell the smell, the, the smell of the spices. And the children of Israel were so afraid, not, not only them, but all the animals were silent. All, everything was, like all the water, it says that the water was so afraid from Hashem, they went back the water. And the, uh, the oceans froze because they were afraid of Hashem, because they, they, it galut Hashem, it was Hashem revealing Himself in this world. And they were looking and they said, how can we listen to the, to the sound of Hashem? We can't bear it. And it says more than that, it's, it's beautiful, and I'll give you the Gemara. And it says that when the children of Israel... And the children of Israel were waiting for the voice of God. They were waiting to hear God. And we know that all of the children of Israel that were sick and, and parts of the body were missing, hands or legs that were missing, God took angels to heal them. And the children of Israel were purified. They were totally purified, which means the soul was shining out of the body. This is a, the, the amount of purification that they had on that time. And God starting, as God began announcing the Ten Commandments. And it says in the Midrash that he said all of them at once. And nobody can say everything at once. You have to say a sentence and another sentence. And the children of Israel were so, they didn't understand anything. And it was so quick. Because God wanted to give them a feeling that this is not a human being. No angel, it's God himself that created the world. And it says that God took the mountain and put it on them. And he said, if you won't accept my Torah, you're going to die here. This is your death, you're going to, buried, you're going to be buried here. And it says, why did he say that? Chafetz Chaim says about it, why did he say that? Chafetz Chaim says about it that if the children of Israel would not have accepted the Torah, the whole world would collapse. Yeah. It won't exist anymore. Yeah. Why? Because the, the world was created because of the Torah and because of the children of Israel that are going to, do, to, uh, to accept the Torah and to do the mitzvah in the Torah. It's because of the children of Israel that are called Rashid and the Torah that is called Rashid. That's why the Rashid. We use that. So if the children of Israel would not have accepted it, they would die at the same place. 
And then God started to say the commandments again. And they, so he started with the first commandment, Anochi Hashem Elokecha. I am your God, the only one. I am your God that I took you out of Egypt. And the question is, you know, the Ot Aleph, the letter Aleph waited 26, gen 26 generations so she can start the Torah. She starts the, the Ten Commandments. Uh, the letter Aleph, you remember I told you about the letters that fought between themselves to be the beginning of the Torah and then the, the only Bet was the one that really, Bracha, blessing, this is the first letter of the Torah, Bereshit Bara Elohim. And the Ot Aleph was so humble, it got, went to the Hashem and said, Hashem, I can't ask, I don't have any request because my value is only one. And all the others are from two until 400 and more than that. But I, I don't have any requests because I, what shall I request? I'm only one. So he said, Hashem called the Otalif, the let Aleph, you are so humble. And because of your humbleness, I'm going to start the Ten Commandments with you. Anochi Hashem Elokecha. So it starts with the Ot Aleph, and you know that the Ot Aleph is also combined from Vav and two Yudim. It's the name of God, 26 Yud Kei Vav Kei. And we see that this, it started, and it says, I am your God that took you out of Egypt. And it says in the Mikra, listen very carefully. It says, Dibur ve dibur kadosh baruch hu. With every single statement that uh, emanated from the mouth of, of God, blessed He. Yastani shmatan shel Israel. The souls of the Jewish people departed from their bodies. Every he started anochi Hashem elokecha. The soul that is holy felt the light of Hashem, and because it felt the light of Hashem, he didn't. He wanted to depart from the body. So it went out of the body and he wanted to lead the back of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to be part of HaKadosh because it comes from there, from holiness. So it went out of the body. It wasn't over there and they died, all of them. All of them were, he says, Anochi Hashem Elokecha, Shorzitecha Meretz Mitzrayim, everybody died at that moment. And the Midrash says, look, Yatsan Ishmatan Shel Yisrael, the souls of the Jewish people departed from their bodies. Sheneemar, as it is stated, Nafshi Yatsabed Avrod, says David HaMelech, my soul departed as he spoke. Umeachar Shemedibur Rishon Yatsan Ishmatan, now since their souls departed after the first statement, the first commandment, Dibur Sheni Ach Kiblu, how come they received the second commandment if their soul already went out of the body in the first commandment? So it says, it says Kacha, Hori Tal Shatid Lachyot Bometim. God brought down the Jew, no, the Tal, the, the um, Tal. No, Du. God took out Du, which, with which he will uh, resurrect the dead in the future, which means Tchiat Ametim, exactly what he's going to do with Tchiat Ametim, he did over here. And then. And then it says, and he resurrected and he resurrected them. Shenemar, as it is said, Geshem and it says, a generous rain did you lavish, oh God, when your her heritage was weary, was weary you established him firmly. And then it says, it continues, and it says, the second commandment, he said, Lo acherim, you will not have another God, except for me, you won't worship idolship. And it says again, the children of Israel passed away that time again. In that the soul went out of the body. And then, and then, and Kadosh Baruch Hu again did Tchiat HaMetim for them. He brought, he brought dough and uh, do. And then Tal, that's the right word. <laughs> and he brought Tal to Tchiat HaMetim, and it came about the more again, and they were again resurrected. And they were afraid that God will continue the commandments. And I want to show you something. So what did they do? They, tell, they told Moshe Rabbeinu, it says that they told Moshe Rabbeinu, just a minute, they were so afraid. They said, please. They told Moshe, please tell us the commandments. Don't let God tell us the, the commandments. We would like to hear the commandments from you because otherwise we're going to die. We'll die the third time. We won't come back to this world. <laughs> so twice they were already dead. They said, we don't want to, we want to hear it from you. You'll be the Jew between God and us. And listen what Moshe Rabbeinu tells them. Don't 
don't be afraid, he says. Ki lebe'avur nasot etchem ba'a Elohim, he says, because God wanted to test you. That's why he does it. Uba'avur tiyei rato al pnechem lebilti tachtu, because he wants you to have his fear on you that you won't sin. This is very weird. What, is, what, what do they mean? What does Moshe mean here? And it says, only to, we know that it's written, Torah tziva lanu Moshe morasha. Nachon? Morasha kirat Yaakov. You know that. It's out of the prayers too. It's written, Torah tziva lanu Moshe morasha kirat Yaakov. So I'm writing Torah tziva lanu Moshe morasha. Now look. How many commandments did Moshe give the children of Israel? Eight out of the ten. But in general, all the halachot, all the mitzvot, he gave them the number of Torah. Torah, Taf is 400, Bab is 6, Reish is 200, and He is 5. How much is it? 611. How many do we have? How many become a mitzvot? How many mitzvot do we have? 613. Two, two of them God gave. Anochi Hashem Elokecha. All the 613 as the number of Torah. That's why it's written Torah Tziva Lanu Moshe because Moshe continued and gave all the 611. Uh, 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 he continued all of them. That's why Torah Tziva Lanu Moshe. From here it comes. Only two commandments God gave us with His voice. And all the others Moshe Rabbeinu. Look how beautiful it is. Out of the 613. But listen, why only the two? What was so important with those two, the two first ones? So the two first ones is like this. Anochi Hashem Elokecha. I am your God. And the second one, Lo Yelecha. Lo Yelecha Elokim. This is the second one. Those are the two commandments that God gave in His voice, the children of Israel. Once God gave those two commandments, I would like to explain to you, those commandments went into their heart and they cannot go out of their heart. They are printed over there, that's it, for, from, from the generations forever, you can't take it out. All the other mitzvot that Moshe told us are not inside our heart like the, those two. And then it says, because of those two, what did Moshe tell them? What did he answer them? He said, Moshe Rabbeinu told them, listen very carefully. God is going to test you. And he wants that his fear will be up, up, upon you. And he doesn't want you to sin. And even it says the people of Israel, the children of Israel, they do not know Torah at all. When there were pogromim, and when there was the Shoah, and every bad thing that had happened, the Holocaust that happened to the Jewish people on, in all the generations, even if they didn't know the Torah at all, but once they had to choose between Hashem and idolship, they chose Hashem, and they were willing to die and sacrifice themselves. Al Kiddush Hashem. And why, if they didn't know Torah? Because those two commandments are in their heart. You can't take it out. Because they died for those two commandments. And all of us were there in Mamad Hal Sinai. Even the, the Ubarim, the babies in, 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 the bell, in the womb were there. Everybody was there. And the children of Israel gave a guarantee to Hashem that they're going to, to do the, the Torah and to fulfill the Torah for all generations by giving the children as a, a guarantee. And we can see over there, Anuchi Hashem Elokecha has inside this, the first commandment has all Ramach Mitzvot Aseh, all the 248 Mitzvot do that we're going to do. And this has Lo Yelechad, which means you won't have other, you won't worship idolship. This over here has all the 600, uh, 365 of Lotase that you are not allowed to do, the mitzvah that you are not allowed to do. It combines inside those two dibor, those two commandments, have everything inside already. You see, already it has everything. Exactly, everything is in those two commandments. So we have the, we have the ability to fulfill the whole, Torah, the whole Torah by those two commandments. We just need to wake up, dear women. We need to wake up, and once we wake up, there's Rat Hashem, we have everything. I would like, you know, I, we, we, we said stories, but I would like to tell you, for example, I'll show you one of the commandments. We have one of the commandments is to respect thy father and mother. 
And it says about Rabbi Yoshua, I'll tell you a story. Rabbi Yoshua was dreaming, he had a dream, and in his dream he saw that they're telling him, you know, be happy for you have a good place in paradise. When you come to paradise, when your soul leaves your body, you're going to sit with a butcher, uh, I forgot the name of the butcher, okay, doesn't matter, with the name of the butcher, let's say Nisim. You're going to sit with him on the t- on the next, next to him on the same table. So he woke up in the morning and he said, wow, maybe he's so righteous, I need to see him. So Rabbi Yoshua told his, his students, his scholars, he said, do you know, do you know him? Do you know that butcher Nisim? And he says, and they told him, no, we do not know him. So he said, I have to go and search for him and find him. I want to know who he is. So they started searching, and they went, they went with him, his, his scholars, and they went from city to city, from city to city. They couldn't find him. Then they came to a small town, and he said, do you know a butcher named Nisim over here? And the people told him, a big rabbi, a big rabbi, why do you look for this simple person? He's Amaretz, he doesn't know anything. Why, why do you search for him? He says, please, call him and tell him to come and see me. So they went to him and they told him, but the butcher thought that they were kidding. Such a righteous person will call him. He didn't come. So they went back to him and they said, you see, he didn't even believe us. So why are you searching for him? So he says, go to him again and said that I'm calling him, but he has to come to me. So they went and they brought him in. He saw the rabbi, he, he couldn't believe himself. He, he, he greeted the rabbi. He said, well, rabbi, what do you, why do you want to, to, to see me? I don't know anything. I'm Amaretz, I don't know anything. He says, I, I, he says I, I don't want to ask you who are you. I just want to ask, what are your deeds? What did you do in this world? He says, to tell you the truth, I don't, don't do a lot of mitzvot. I don't know a lot of mitzvot. But there's one thing that I do. Every morning, I have a sick father and mother that they can't even take care of themselves. So every morning, I wash them, I dress them, and I feed them. Every day, every day, every morning. When Rabbi Yoshua heard that, he was so happy, he kissed him, he blessed him. He says, you don't know what part of paradise you have up there. Without even understanding what you're doing, because this is a really, truly kibbutz avayim. There are a lot of stories that you'll see over here that you're not allowed to use the name of God in vain. And which means even you're not allowed to swear, to swear with the name of God, even if a thing is true. And halachat kama v'chamad, that you're not allowed to use the name of God when you swear over something that is not necessary. For example, if this is night now and the moon is out, so you're not allowed to swear that this is night and the moon is out, even though it's true. Because it's not necessary. <laughs> so it says, I'll give you a story about it. It says about um, a father that was, uh, he was on his deathbed, and he called his son, he was very rich. And he said to his son, listen, I became so rich because I did not vow. I did not take any oath. I just kept this mitzvah all of my life, and I wish you to do the same. So the son said, okay. He inherited from his father 10,000 100,000 gold uh, coins, and there were thieves in that town that heard about it, so they wanted to take his coins. So they came to him after his father passed away and the Shiva was over. They came and said, uh, you know, your father owes us 100,000 uh, 100, coins, uh, gold coins, and you should fulfill his, uh, his, what he owed to us. You, you should give it to us. So he said, my father doesn't owe you anything. I know your kind. He doesn't owe you anything. They said, can, they asked him, can you swear for, about it? Can you get, swear that your, your father does not owe us anything? He said, no. So they went to a judge. They went to the judge, and the judge told him, if you say that, do you have any paper to show that he doesn't owe them? He says, I don't have anything. So he said, can you swear that your father does not owe them? He says, I can't swear. So he said, you have to give them the 100,000 uh, coins, uh, gold coins. So he couldn't do anything. He didn't want to go over his father's wish. He didn't want to go over the commandment, so he gave them the, the 100,000 gold coins. So it says that he became very poor, and what's left over, he had only 10 gold coins. That's what he had. But they thought that he has more than that. So they came to him again, and they said, we didn't take everything that he has. We need to know what he has. What, what does he have more? So they went to him and said, we know that you have more than that, and you owe us like percentage. 
you should give us the rest. So he said, I, I can't give you anything because I barely have anything. So they went to the governor and they, they scanned the skin and he went to prison. And he left his children, seven children, with his wife. And the wife did not have money. So what did she He couldn't swear, so his wife didn't have money. So she became a laundry woman. She took people's clothes and she started cleaning them and gave, for this she, she earned a living. And one day she was doing that and a, a captain in a ship saw her cleaning the clothes and wash, washing it and he had bad thoughts in his mind. So he came to her and he says, he said, told her, listen, this is my garment, please clean it and give it back to me and I'm going to give you ten, ten coins of gold. And she thought to herself, wow, with this I can go and, take, and free my husband. So she went to her oldest son and she said, come over here, I'll give you that money, I'll do what, for him what he needs and you go and free your father. The son took the money, she cleaned the, the garment, and she went on the ship to give it to the captain. The, ship just, uh, the captain just waited for her to go on the ship. Once she went on the ship, he took the oar again, and he started sailing. And the children were standing on the shore and crying, Mother, Mother, but they couldn't bring her back. She was already in sea. So they didn't know what to do, and the oldest son said to himself, I'll go and free my father, maybe he will know what to do. So he went to his father, he freed his father, his father went, he didn't know what to do, now he has to earn a living, so he became a shepherd. He became a shepherd and went with his children. He went with his children, Chavuat Leitzim, a, a people saw them, and kidnapped all his children. Mm -hmm. He was left with nothing, he couldn't free his children, he was left with, and he didn't vow. All of it, because of this commandment, he didn't go over his father's words. So he sat down and cried to Hashem and said, Hashem, I listened to my father. I did your Ten Commandments. I did not mention your name in vain. And look what happened to me. My wife was taken. I was imprisoned. All my wealth was taken from me. My children were kidnapped. What shall I do, God? And then it says in the Midrash that Bat Kol came, which means that a voice from heaven came and told him, this was your, your test in this world. God is going to bring you back everything and more than that. You are going to become a governor of this city, he told him. And you're going to have all the wealth that you need and your wife is going to come back to you and your children too. And this is what happened eventually. Because, it did, because everything that we do in this world, we are tested. All the suffering that we have in this world is only to test us and to purify our souls. So Be'ezrat Hashem, I would like to finish with these words and, uh, and wish all of you Gula Pratit Be'ezrat Hashem and Gula Klalit Alenu Ba'al Kol Bet Yisrael Amen Shagia Mashiach Tetenu Mibraoi Amenu Amen Eliyahu Nabi Zachur Latov Le'olam Yipared Adam Echavaro Bidbar Alakha Yachid Ve'arabim Alakha Ke'arabim God bless you Thank you